Hey everybody, Josh Ronquist here for Heavy Debris Things, and it's time to talk about all the music that came out today and some stuff I missed along the way, with 11 new albums for Out Today and What I Missed. Hurry, hurry up! I have to pee! First up, we have Blind Channel with Exit Emotions. And if you want to hear a bit more insight into this album, make sure to go check out my interview of Blind Channel on this very channel. The band is pretty much outside of my wheelhouse for the most part. Violent pop, new metal, some alternative rock stuff, it's not necessarily my bag. But when these guys do it, they do it in a way that is fun to listen to from start to finish. Think of them as kind of like a finished version of Electric Cowboy and you'll start to get the idea. It's just fun, it's heavy, they tackle some real stuff going on in this album, and on this particular album they get some outside help with some outside writers and guest appearances, all to make the music the best that it possibly can be. And for someone who usually just sticks to metal, this stuff is very enjoyable, and it just might be for you as well. Hey! This emergency exit is painted on! There's no way out! There's no way out! Next up, we have Devastator with Conjurers of Cruelty. This is my kind of black metal, thrash metal, black and roll, all combined together just to create some fun black metal to listen to from start to finish. Think of bands like Midnight and you start to get into the right direction here, but of course Devastator does it in its own way. The songs are short, sweet, the album is just filled to the brim with great black and roll, black thrash, the perfect production for this style, and lyrical content that really adds up. Everything about this album simply rules, and if you love black and roll and black thrash, you need to check this album out. Does this look dumb? Huzzah! Don't make me come over there! Coming up now is the 10th album from Firewind known as Stand United. And with a band like Firewind, you would think that they would have a lot more albums than 10, but they're all about the consistency and quality over quantity. Of course, Firewind is that very consistent sound of power metal, heavy metal, and Gus G's ferocious guitar style. And you get that in spades here on this album. You also get George from War Drum taking over the helm for Firewind in the vocal category who fits in just perfectly. This is another great album in the band's discography, and it really doesn't need to stand out from the crowd because all of Firewind's work just works so good on its own merit. And if you're looking for some just great, consistent power metal and hard rock, a brand new Firewind album will be right up your alley. Gonna dig me a hole, gonna dig me a hole, gonna put a nerd in it, gonna put a nerd in it. Next up is Metro Society with the London Conspiracy Chapter 1, 1898. Now this is a brand new band to me, and I think it's because their debut album came out the year I graduated in 2007. But what I hear here on this sophomore album is very, very intriguing to me. Combining the best elements of progressive metal, creating a very interesting concept, and leaving you wanting more, especially with it being chapter one. I'm very curious to see where the rest of this thematic piece goes. But for here, there's a lot of great heavy moments going on here. Uh, the production is a bit raw, but I think it really fits for the style of music, and it's just some great prog metal. And if you're looking for something that's a little more on the underground side for that, give this one a shot. Can't you be more like Eddie? He never says a word against me. Well, that's because you cut out his tongue. He's right, Eve. Up next, we have Suicidal Angels with Profane Prayer. <laughs> The eighth album from this Greek thrash band shows the band coming out of the pandemic much more mature, wiser, but keeping that consistent sound of thrash that they love so very much. Of course there's some dynamics on this album, but you know what you're getting with the Suicidal Angels album and it's pummeling, 
It's meant right from the heart, and the lyrical content is a bit more varied on this album about the world around us, so if you want a little bit of a history lesson mixed in with your Slayer-infused thrash metal, this is an album that must be coming up on your radar. Here's the angel, see the angel, it's my angel, no one else is next to the rakes. Coming up now is Soul Dusk with Anthesis. <laughs> This sophomore album from Emily Hightower is an amazing display of how you do black metal, folk metal, and combine so many different layers of different styles of music to combine some of the most evil sounding but beautiful sounding music out there in 2024. On the debut album, Emily did everything herself. On this one, it is a full on band and you can really hear the different layers of different influences going on throughout this album, but that does not take away from the Salt Dusk sound and it just makes makes everything feel richer and fuller. This is a surprise album for me and I'm gonna go back and check out the debut album after this one because I thoroughly enjoy what's going on with this. And if you need something of that folk black metal sound, you will love this album. I guarantee it. IN YOUR LITTLE FACES! And finally, for brand new albums that come out today, I have Volcondra with The Way of Ancients. This is a brand new discovery for me, and it might be my discovery of the year. Well, at least for bands that have put out more than one album. This album contains everything that I love about mellow black, folk metal, mellow death, progressive sides, and so much more. There's so much melody and harmony to this album amongst all the brutality, the evil sounds, and everything else that's going on with the band. Combine that with some American songwriting, combine that with some brutal moments, and you get one of the most fascinating metal albums of 2024. This one's gonna rank very, very high in my top 100 albums of 2024, and it only gets better with every repeat listen. I cast a spell on his ass with my foot. So that's everything coming out today. But what did I miss? What I miss? First up for this is the band Counting Hours with The Wishing Tomb. And with her, I fall. This sophomore album from this near Doom Supergroup features members of Shape of Despair, Rapture, The Chant, and Cinnaba Urn. And this is everything that I love about Doom Metal. Thankfully, due to a recommendation, I got to check this one out. And this is by far one of my favorite Doom Metal albums of 2024 so far. It combines that great funeral doom, gothic doom, melodic doom style that I love so very, very much. With very deep, hard-hitting lyrics, profound fan production, and just everything that you would want in this style. If you want to hear what all of these members of these bands are doing outside of their main projects, you need to check out Counting Hours. You'll be glad that you did. You're about to take a journey into the mind. You may see and experience things that are strange and frightening, but remember, they can't physically harm you, though they may destroy you mentally. Coming up next is My Darkest Time with Fragile. <laughs> Now this album is an absolute paradox to me because it's gothic doom metal, death doom metal, and Christian music? Yeah, bet you didn't see that coming, did ya? Well, unless you already know the band. But My Darkest Time combines Christian elements of the darkest times and finding salvation in this style of doom metal. Now it won't be for everybody, and they'd be crazy to think it would be, but for those with curious minds, you should give this one a shot. As for myself, I listen to everything from Neil Morse to Rotting Christ. So religious matters don't affect me positively or negatively when it comes to music. I just want to enjoy good stuff, and this is some good stuff here. The vocals won't be for everybody, but if you do enjoy it, you will love it. Awesome production and stuff that makes you think. Give this one a shot for all inquiring minds. Oh, save me, Jeebus! And finally, my biggest blunder of the week, for forgetting it last week, it is North Sea Echoes with their debut album, Really Good, Terrible Things. Strange, a feeling that remains. Ray Alder and Jim Matheos 
back together from not creating music with Fate's Warning to create something very different here. It's got some great ambient moments, some progressive moments, one song gets particularly heavy. And of course, the emotional lyrical content of Ray Alder is here in strides. I love this album to death, and it's not in my normal wheelhouse of enjoying much more heavier music, but I love this album. It really makes you think it's really good for your mental health when you're feeling low and it feels like you need something that matches up with it. It's great to hear Jim and Ray writing again, and I just can't wait to see what's next. Hello? 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 Echo! Echo! And there you go folks, 11 brand new albums, some out today, some I missed in the past weeks. But what do you think? Did I pick some good albums out? Any new recommendations for you? Anything that you're going to check out? Terrible albums? Anything like that. And of course, if I have a terrible taste in music, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. The channel's really been picking up steam lately, and I'm so very thankful for all of that. And I thank you so much for sticking around and checking out everything I do with reviews interviews, the podcast, and everything else that I do. And until next Friday's Out Today and What I Missed for March 1st, 2024, I can't believe I'm already saying that, this is Josh Runquist for the Heavy Debriefings YouTube channel saying, embrace the skullet.